right, friends, welcome to the Uncommon Freedom Show. Today is going to be episode 54. We are less than one week out from my book launch on Tuesday, November 7th. The Seven Disciplines of Uncommon Freedom by Kevin Tinter will be available for sale on Amazon and Audible if you want to listen to the book instead of reading it. You excited? Yes, so very excited. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we are commenting that we didn't plan this out, but we're both wearing uh, similar colored shirts here. Similar, but not the same. Similar, but not the this same. This happened to us one time when we were talking on stage together. We both wore red, right. but it was a little bit... Right, it has to be, yeah. And it looked really bad on stage. I don't think these clash, though. So let us know in the comments, you know, if you think our blues I asked flash. I checked the camera to see if we could tell if we were... If it looked good or not, but that would mean getting up from the chair and going from out from behind the camera. Is there now? I could have stopped recording and rewound and looked at the recording. That would be, but that's not what you were insinuating. Like that, yeah. So nope. Uh, oh, with a little bit of uh, need for sleep. Yes, you're a little bit tired. So okay. okay. Well, and uh, folks, you're actually catching us. As you can tell by the glare through the shades, we're actually recording during the daytime. It is before noon. We rarely record this early in the day, but we're making it happen. So being super productive and we are excited. We're going to talk about one of the chapters in the book is paramount purpose. And so today as a break between some of the interviews we've had with some awesome guests, we're going to talk about three simple steps to bonding with your kids. We recently came back from a great trip with our kids in Arizona. We have this amazing phenomenon called fall break. Yeah. Um, please do not adopt it if you live outside of Arizona because we love having the world as our playground. Selfishly. Selfishly. But it is an absolute wonderful thing. Uh, our two kids, weeks it, of fall break. Yes. It's, two weeks of spring break. Oh, it's one of Christmas break. The yeah. fall break is probably our favorite because we've survived the hot summer. Yeah. Uh, the weather is good, although it was a hotter October this year than normal. But the weather's great in Arizona, so if you want to do things in Arizona, it's the perfect time to do it. If you want to travel to other parts of the country or the world, most American kids are in school, and therefore there's just not as many people, so it's awesome. But um, step one is to take trips as a family. So this is something that we actually kind of solidified several years ago, and we decided, well, I mean, we really started taking trips more than six. Because we yeah. all did yeah. jumping, which was great because you asked on Facebook the other day, you know, what are some um, trips are, you know, I don't remember how you asked the question. Well, my question was, is the quality of the trip enhanced by the cost of the trip? That's essentially what I was asking. That's a varied response. Yeah. I think one of the common themes was what matters most is who you're with, right? I mean, you could go on a really expensive trip with some miserable people yeah. uh, that you don't like, and that could definitely ruin a trip. I would say our families, in the scope of our parenting, our family's favorite trips have probably been, without doubt, our most expensive. But it's not to say we didn't have incredible trips when we were basically living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of the families said that they loved camping. Yep. And that was a common one. And that was actually how we started. So we did a lot of tent trailer camping. Yes. Lamping for me. And I think the reason that we've learned that taking trips is important is that there's something that happens when you get out of your house. You get away from your routine. Yeah. I mean, we're blessed. The house we live in now is absolutely our dream home. Many people come and they say the backyard looks like a resort. And we've even learned that even though we have this amazing house with a swimming pool, a hot tub, pickleball court, Everything that we would do at a resort, or almost everything, we could do at our house. But we've even found that if we want to fully unplug with our kids, we need to go to a local resort. Except no one cooks for us at this house. That is, well, you do, but well, it is but different. Mean, no one cooks for me at this house. That is correct. And I like going out Yeah, and not cooking. And so there's something special. Like we can see the difference in our kids, especially one of them like just really thrives, like becomes hope, like probably his true self. In many ways. Well, it's the vacation version. The vacation version. Which is not how you can live everyday life. Correct. But it doesn't have to be expensive is the bottom line. But there's so much value when you get away and unplug. You know, one of the things we frequently do when we take a trip is we say, turn in your phones. We greatly reduce the amount of time they have on electronics when we travel. 
and you know adventure that happens you know frustrations things that in the moment are you know cause you to pull your hair out are the things that you laugh about you know a day later or a week later or sometimes years later so do you have a story for that i can't think of yeah that is recent no i mean i'm thinking back to when i was a kid my parents i can't remember if they were borrowing or if they purchased they actually had this older small motorhome for a season of time and my parents live on 30 some acres out in the country and the motorhome was parked in their front yard um or driveway and they decided we're going to camp as a family in our yard now we i don't think ever once went camping as a family when i was growing up and of course i would have loved a motorhome but by this time i think i was probably 15 years old so i could totally see you know our kids being this way. Uh, but my parents decided we were going to spend the night as a family in the motor home. I think there was just so much noise. I couldn't get to sleep. I was angry. And that doesn't sound like actually that much fun to just go outside at that age. Like maybe when you were a little kid sleeping out. Exactly. Now you're like, yeah. So my brother's probably from my actual <laughs> bed. Yeah, exactly. So um, I yeah. think I was very angry, but it's just one of those things that we now laugh about. So we give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, actually, when we first got our tent trailer in Oregon, I think we practiced sleeping in it the first time and we put it in our driveway, which had a slight slant to it, which we had to, you know, equalize it or what's the right word for it? Bound? Level it. Level it. Yeah. Proper term. And we were actually asleep in the middle of the night when one of our kids fell out the back of the tent trailer, which basically wasn't secured properly because some of the straps had broken and Austin fell straight out of the bed onto the concrete driveway. Yep. And somehow survived. Yep. But in the middle of the night. traumatic. Oh my gosh. He was fine. Kids bounce when they're young. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't remember it quite that well, but yes. And then we had our skiing fiasco many years ago, but we don't need to go in the, into that today. So, uh, yeah, we will talk about that. Bottom yeah, line right. is but anyway, take trips. Take trips. And if you do take trips, we highly, highly encourage you to have your teenagers and all of your kids put electronics away and just unplug, which is what's going to lead us to the second two things. Yes. Having conversations. Yes. As EB used to call it, conversations. Conversations. Whenever yes. the boys would get in trouble and she was a really little toddler, she said, Austin, what did, how did you think? No, it was Carson. Yeah, Carson. Carson, I need to have a conversation with you. Yep. She was very intense and it was absolutely hilarious. And I'm guessing she picked that up from us. Yeah. So, Probably. we've had a lot of conversations with a lot of our children, yes. but especially a few have gotten multiple conversations. So, this is easier when your kids are younger, as most people can imagine. Well, the chaos at the table can be a lot like, even nowadays with all the age groups that we have, the personality styles, most uh, family dinners where we're like, hey, we're all sitting down together at the same time, which happens only a couple of times a week right now because of all the sports and the ages of our children. But we do try to have family dinner a couple of times a week. And there's always a goal to like have some actual conversation and to do highs and lows. That's a great way to just create a simple pattern of sharing how your day went without a lot of pressure. And Evie loves to initiate that. So she'll start the highs and lows. But as your kids get to be teenagers, it is harder, much harder to have authentic conversation in situations like family time, I think. Like they want to have one-on-one -on -one conversation with you when there's nothing else going on, usually way past my bedtime um, when they're laying on a couch and I'm, you know, rubbing their feet or something. But normally they're hard to communicate with on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I like about the conversations is you know, utilizing something like conversation cards. There's right. lots of tools out there. Uh, to help with, you know, sometimes they're deeper, you know, topics and sometimes they're not as deep, but I think it's good to vary it. That is something that, or simply highs and lows, you know, Evie loves to initiate those. That's something you can do at all yeah. and just take advantage of the opportunity. And it's not going to be perfect. You know, the kids are going to bicker and they'll argue or they're going to correct. And one of the things right. we share is that like, there is no wrong answer here. Like right. every person gets a chance to answer. We're not going to critique it. Let them share whatever their opinion or their feeling is. But this is something you can do at home. And then when we travel and go on vacation, this is something we love to do. Now, you and I love to do this. The kids might not like to, but they're actually very cooperative with this. We like to do it at the table. And so it's something that you can do when you're on a trip, but definitely don't need to wait until you are on a trip. But it's just a great way to learn more about each other and talk about something other than whatever, video games, sports, or something like that. Yep. And so get your hands on some conversation cards. Maybe at some point in one of our blogs related to this podcast, we can list out a couple of companies that we've gone through. Some people have sent them to us as gifts, which is awesome. They're also great for couples when you want to go on a date night and you're looking for just like, 
you know, to spice up the conversation. Sometimes we have, you know, conversations about the same things or we only talk about the kids, only talk about work. And so I think the conversation cards are really good prompts. Um, the other thing you can do, obviously, is make conversation cards as a family. So grab a mason jar and some pieces of paper and everybody writes down a couple questions and you throw them in there and you use them throughout the month. But there are great ones out there and they come in, you know, nice little carrying cases. And what I do whenever we travel is I get a Ziploc bag and I go in there and I pull out a stack of ones that we haven't done before. And then before, you know, dinners usually is when I would bring them out. Um, I'll just sift through. Some of them, you know, maybe aren't appropriate. Some of them don't make sense. Some of them aren't that interesting. Some of them I feel like could be a little contentious. So, you know, I just pick a variety of ones that I think will bring about conversation. And it's just a nice way to also teach your kids how to have conversation. Because I think in the day and age we live in now, kids are literally texting each other and snapping each other and doing all of this quick, short um, communication that doesn't really have any meaning behind it or has very little meaning and it's not teaching them how to be a good active listener and then to have a response to something and so yeah. conversation is being lost and we need to train our kids how to do that for life skills yeah it's been interesting one of our boys has been having actually more telephone conversations recently which i think was never seen i mean kids today they really they don't have phone conversations so they rarely do you know they kind of do everything by text they set things up where you and i grew up Calling your friends. I tap it with a phone on the wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's something lost when you're just, you know, communicating by texting back and forth. Yep. So. And I actually love it. Like he was um, doing the dishes last night with, you know, his headphones in while talking to a friend. And it was just like they're talking about their day or work or something. And he's kind of laughing at the same time and like having this really good conversation, a very normal teenage conversation with someone. And it just gives us a glimpse into their life. Like we're not listening in intently. But you realize with all the texting and things that can happen in bedrooms and stuff, like we just have lost the art of understanding kind of what is going on in our kids' brains. And so remember, this is about bonding. So that's why those conversations are important because how do we connect? We have to be very intentional with the current culture we live in, the age that we're raising our children in to be intentional about conversation. And we encourage you as parents, whether your kids are young, they're young adults, or anywhere in between to make sure that you're prioritizing conversation and you're teaching it and you're creating kind of a culture of conversation. So step one is to take trips as a family. Two is to have actual conversation using things like the highs and lows and conversation cards. And step three is to play games together. We just have grown up. I think both of our families have played games together. We played games with each other's families when we were first dating. And it's just a way to kind of enhance the quality of the relationship. Usually it leads to a lot of laughter, sometimes occasionally rarely often it leads to arguing and disputes but you know we spend a lot of time playing games especially with evie who's yeah. years old but the other thing is playing games really is a great opportunity for character development mm -hmm. um okay. so we'll start by recommending some games for younger kids and, and i just made a note about the ladybug game i totally forgot about or is that the one with the aphids and um yeah okay so that is a great game for really young kids a couple other games that our younger kids have enjoyed is Candyland, Shoots and Ladders. I absolutely oh, hate that game. That. I hate that game. game. Uh, Zingo, uh, that's the other tile game, right? That uh, EBA loves. Yeah, somebody gave us Zingo. It is. Z. Never heard of it before, but Z I N G O. Uh, it is an awesome game. Zingo for, for uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, it's a great game. And Trouble, EB was really enjoying um, Sorry. Yeah. But I like Trouble better. It's just kind of easier to play and set up. I'm sure not and incessant. Once I introduced her to Trouble about two months ago, she is going nuts with it. Like we play just about every single day. It's really fun to see her strategy develop. Oh, yeah. I don't understand statistically how she could be literally 80% of the time. I mean, she beats me about it. It doesn't make sense when... I shouldn't I, care because she's six, but honestly, the three in me, it's pissing me off. I start to win and then she comes back out of nowhere and I just like honestly have to have worked so hard on my sports. And the other thing is with her is we found that if I was in a position where maybe like I was one person away from winning or one pawn... And she had two or three still stuck in home or start um, where it looked like, and you know, there's no way she was going to win. She was like, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Yep. There's no way I can win. And it became a teaching opportunity to say, hold on a second. Number one, we don't quit. And number two, even if you lose, you're going to be a good loser. And so that's where the character development is really beneficial. A couple days of trouble, which yes. is really hard for her. It was. Yeah. 
But then the other thing is we like to take games. We've talked about our debts or deep emotional bonding time or dates with our kids. Uh, we frequently take Uno. Uh, we have a travel travel troll game and we'll take cribbage. So taking games when you do those dates with your kids is a great way to just do something other than just sit there and stare. The other thing is so many restaurants, even fast food restaurants these days have TVs, which drives me nuts. Like one of the reasons to go to a restaurant with family is to connect and TVs. I mean, we have one kid, actually two, that literally just gets sucked in like a tractor beam if there's a TV. And so we have to strategically ask for, you know, booths in the corner and put those kids facing away from the TV so that we can actually look at each other while we're having a meal. Hey friends, here's a quick reminder that if you're finding value in this show, would you do us a favor and subscribe? Share with someone you think would benefit and give us a five-star rating. We make nothing from this show and invest a lot of time and money producing it. All we ask is that you help us get our message to more people. And then do you want to talk about some of our favorite games with the older kids? Uh, yeah, there was something else about trouble I wanted to say. Um, oh, I think you talked about Evie's strategy changing, but again, yep. she's six years old, you guys, and watching her the way she plays now versus the way she played just a couple of weeks ago is incredible. And when I played with her initially, I just kind of played like I didn't think really carefully about my strategy because I was playing with a six-year-old. And it only took a couple weeks of that before all of a sudden I'm like, uh, I'm going to be very strategic about how I play trouble. Again, the competitor inside of me was like, I'm not letting this girl win. Yeah. And that's the other thing. We don't let our kids win. We're not cruel or mean or anything, but we just like, no, I'm here. I'm going to be kind to you, but I'm here to play to win. We're teaching how to play actual games, follow actual rules. Not everyone gets a trophy. So again, lots of character development in game. And we also have a role in our house that so the loser always cleans up. Loser always cleans And it's kind of a good lesson because... Kids don't naturally have a good attitude when they lose and, and forcing them to just having this rule. And they understand it. And loser cleans up. That's how we do it in our family. It gives them the opportunity to really check their attitude because, you know, if we don't coach them, you know, they're not going to want to clean up or they're going to have a bad attitude. Coach myself it. after I lose to Evie to clean up. It's understandable. All right. Games okay. for older kids. Games for older kids. So again, we don't always take these all to restaurants with like older teens. They don't necessarily want to play games. But when we're on our boat trip or we're just doing something fun as a family, so Bananagrams is a way to play Scrabble. Scrabble. Yeah. Plus Fiend Scrabble. On the go. Really fun. Boggle. Um, Cribbage is a great game to teach your kids. Also great at math. So, you know, teaching your kids to calculate mentally. Um, and then a game called Left, Right, Center, which is actually incredibly simplistic. But we actually just make it more fun by putting some money to it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a basic gambling game. And it was fun when we were on our trip a year ago. It was the first time our kids had gambled to our knowledge. And it was funny seeing the different personalities of our kids come out. And, yep. you know, I realized for some people, gambling is a major problem and we're not trying to create that. But I think once again, we want our kids to make mistakes as kids instead of mistakes as adults. So giving them the opportunity to just put in, I think it's $2 um, or $3, whatever. I think it's just 2 or $3 of their own money and see what happens when you gamble it was a good lesson for them. Like one kid won the first round and he's like, I'm out. Yep. He was like George Costanza going out of yep. you know, He was like, I'm not playing anymore. I won all my money. Yeah. You know, where somebody else might be like, okay, let's go again. Let's go again. So. Yeah. And then one of our kids, when they put their money in, then they saw someone take it. They're like, what are we doing? I'm not doing this. So anyways, but it was also just a fun game. So Cribbage, great game. Uh, we were on a adult's trip to Hawaii, I don't know, five years ago. And I don't know if you remember, but it was like nonstop cribbage tournaments and things like that. Great fun. I remember game. our recent trip where you just kept beating me over and over again also. But right, you almost came back. It was very yeah. beautiful. But a few lives about cribbage, awesome game for math uh, for kids that struggle because they have to do a lot of computation. I mean, it's simple. Mental math. Um, but it, it is good. So uh, the word games like Banana Grabs and Boggle, awesome games. They're, you know, they're fun. It really stretches the kids and as far as... Rafa introduced us to Bananagrams. So yeah. Charles said. So a ton of fun. So um, I would say also just like when it comes to more social gatherings or even on the boat, we did this like playing more interactive games too. So whether it's um, Taboo or Gestures yep. or we play Celebrity. Thank you, Chris and Jihei and our small group from Sun Valley first introducing us to Celebrity like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, so that's always been a fun one that we'll play around the holidays and things like that. So... Um, because that one will just create a lot of laughter and, you know, shenanigans, which is, you know, my favorite thing is when we can play a game and have a lot of shenanigans. And Celebrity is a game that you can play. Like um, we played it last year at Thanksgiving and we had, I think, uh, my aunt and uncle were in their 60s 
all the way down to Dylan and uh, Dylan at yeah, eleven or twelve years old. Yeah, so, you were definitely kind of set to that one. Absolutely. So, friends, thanks for listening. We hope you find this helpful. Our goal is to just give you a couple of ideas on how you can bond with your kids, take trips. They don't have to be expensive. Have conversations, highs and lows. You don't even need cards to do it, but if you go look, uh, there's lots of different conversation cards out there. And then playing games with your kids. Turn the TV off, play some games, and bond. And again, thanks for listening. Remember, my book is out next week. for you. Absolutely. I'm really excited. Chapter one is out right now for a free listen on Audible. Absolutely. Um, we'll put the link yep. for uh, chapter one. Uh, in the notes, and this way you can whet your appetite and be ready to yeah, purchase. See you wanting more. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Have a great week, friends, and we appreciate your support. Bye.